Hey guys, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great video. Today we're going to be showing you the best method for actually testing a submersible pump motor. We have shown you before, but we're going to show you an even better method. Okay, so in a previous video, we showed you how to troubleshoot your submersible well pump motor using an ohm meter. Well, that sometimes doesn't give you the most accurate readings, and we've got a perfect example pump here today that's recently pulled out of a well that is uh, the, the uh, perfect example to show you for, for a situation where a mega is actually going to give you better results and a more accurate reading. Now, an ohm meter is, is a good thing to use to give you a good idea of testing things, but it's not the most accurate to, to identify those hard to detect leaks and so forth. So we're going to get started and show you how to use this piece of equipment to test this motor. I've got a brand new motor here and then I've got this bad motor, well pump and motor in this case, uh, that we're going to test and show you where the ohm meter misses it. And this, I've actually got my nice meter today, I didn't want to use the cheapy. Um, just because I feel like this gets the point across even better. We're using a nice fluke meter. It's a fluke 12 multimeter. Uh, so it should be able to, or it should be one of the more accurate meters out there. Um, and then we've also got the uh, the fluke Mager here that we're gonna be using. And, and we'll show you that, that there is a fault in this particular setup that cannot be detected by the ohm meter. So let's show you uh, real quick here. Okay, so we've got our ohm meter set up here. We're set to 100 K times value uh, on the ohm meter so that we're going to be able to pick up those finite shorts to ground. Uh, for example, we touch this here, we're overloaded, we've, we're infinity, no resistance. Um, so if you remember from our last video, we're checking the uh, insulation resistance, which means we're checking our windings, which is the yellow, black, and uh, red against the ground. And what we're looking for is a high number. And in this case, you can see that main winding to, or uh, the, the common to ground is infinity, black to ground or main to ground is infinity, and red to ground is also infinity. So that's interesting because we don't have enough of a short, like by touching the casing here where it completely shorts out and we hit zero, we don't have enough of a short to detect to, to verify that that well this motor is bad and so in in a situation you could find yourself in is if you could test it test it with an ohm meter and then you end up reinstalling the well pump and uh, find out later that it's actually bad and have to pull it back out of the hole um, and this pump I can tell you well this motor rather does have a short to ground however we cannot detect it with this so what we've got over here is we've got our mager set up. Now if I, I have it grounded over here against the pump itself, it's a steel uh, pump body, so I have it grounded over here, it's just this little clip, clippy deal. Um, and I could also hook it to the ground wire and it will give me the same results, but it kind of is in the way. So I want you guys to see as much as possible. So first we'll check this one here. Now we've got I was getting a point two earlier. There it is. There's the point two. Um, so that is a huge short to ground. 200k at um, 500 volts. And then let's check the common. So that again, 200k um, short. And then if we check the start. So this motor is definitely on its way out, absolutely on its last leg. There is nothing left in this thing. And, and when you've got your handy dandy Franklin Electric AIM manual, as I've referred to a million times, if we go to page 46 here, and uh, you go into, I guess that's page 47, and where it's talking about the meg ohm value, um, so it's basically saying that, um, but it's basically saying that if you're below 10, that, that thing's toast. It should not be reinstalled. Um, so always refer back to that AIM manual. It does walk you through the instructions on how to do this if this video was not clear enough for you. But this is a perfect example that shows you 
how an ohmmeter, though a handy tool, is not as sensitive enough uh, to be able to detect what a mager can do, which it actually is sending voltage. Okay, so now we have our brand new motor show, uh, set up here, and I just want to show you, because um, we just got finished making out the old motor, I want to show you what a new motor looks like when you actually do the same tests on it. So if I can do this without getting shocked, because these will zap you. So a new motor in that Franklin A manual says it should be over 200. We're clearly well over 200 here. Uh, we've got 550. So, and I would imagine that each one of these individual leads is going to basically be the same, but we'll just test one more just for the sake of showing you. 550 again. Now, if we do that same test with our ohm meter, once again, you're going to see that regardless of what we touch, I don't know if you can actually see all that, it's overloaded, basically infinity. We're, we're, not, um, we're not able to read it with this ohm meter, and thus for those really unique situations where the, the motor windings are shorted out but they're not totally melted and, and, and destroyed, that the ohm meter is not able to detect it, and this could have potentially um, cost this homeowner thousands of dollars by reinstalling this pump because it wasn't properly diagnosed and troubleshot. So just keep all that in mind. I thought this might be a cool video for you guys to see. I know a lot of you have enjoyed um, my ohm out or my video where I show you how to ohm out a motor. Um, so don't forget to like and subscribe uh, for more great content and we'll catch you next time.